Hi, I'm Karen Knudsen. Um, I am so pleased to be able to uh, show you all uh, a special lesson that I have about color. So when uh, Jonas called and asked if I could come and do a video for Carlin, oh my goodness, I was on board completely. I love Carlin with all my heart and so I would do anything for her. Um, this is um, a really, really fun lesson. If you, um, many of you maybe have done um, color, uh, color graphs or color wheels and I am not big on that. I, I really like to make things fun. And so that was one thing uh, Carla and I had in common, make it fun. And so anything you can do to make it easier is my motto. <laughs> so maybe I'm a little bit lazy, who knows. But I like to have something that, a good result when I'm done. And so uh, with that, we will get started. So um, the, the first thing I'm going to show you is a color wheel that I have done. Um, this happens to be not, not the colors that I may be working in, but I, I wanted you all to see this is the traditional color wheel. So it, you have um, your yellow, your blue, and your red in a triangle fashion. And then when you mix the two of these, you get this color. And when you mix the two of these, then you get this color. So this particular color wheel is New Gamboge, Scarlet Lake, and Antwerp Blue. I primarily use Winsor Newton colors, but um, I, I will be telling you about some other ones that I use too. Uh, anyway, so this is, this is traditional. This took me maybe uh, probably an hour to do. <laughs> I, just to figure out how, how to space it and everything. So um, I've devised an easier way. So here's what we are going to do. And let me show you the finished products first. So here would be um, a finished one um, with the, col the three colors. Um, I'm going to be using New Gamboge. That is Windsor Newton. This is New Gamboge and Red Rose Deep. And that is one where I stray. I use a Da Vinci brand, and so you get a huge, huge tube um, to be able to, for more for your money. Uh, Permanent Rose is a substitution if you want to do this lesson and use the same colors as me. Permanent Rose would be a good substitute for um, the Red Rose Deep. And then Antwerp Blue, which is um, a Winsor Newton color. So this is one of the ones. Um, and then starting exactly the same, and you'll see these steps in a minute, we could end up with this. And so if you like to do people, then that might be a possibility. And if you're more abstract, then maybe you would want to do this. So there is many possibilities. Any object that you want to add, you can. So the way that I start these is I have, I draw three shapes on the paper. And so this, this paper, by the way, is seven, about seven and a half by seven and a half. And so it's a good size to be able to do these. So you've got three shapes. So I've got this shape and then none of the shapes touch. So you've got, this shape is within that fine, but it doesn't overlap and it doesn't touch. And then there's my third shape. By drawing these three shapes, now I have actually four areas that I can paint into. So um, let's get started. So my colors are, um, I told you Antwerp blue, and so um, I'll do Antwerp blue first. And um, it's a, it's a, it stays put, it's a staining color. So I like, I like to use this on the underneath um, when I'm working with, with real paintings. Not that this isn't a real painting, it is. Um, so I'll paint inside of this. Now this is where I'm probably going to show you about, I'm gonna tip this up just a little bit. I want you to see that there is a bead. Do you see this? So this is how wet that if you want to have the type of paintings where um, no strokes are seen, that's the trick. So you just come within this. 
I'm not getting quite to my line because I want to have a little bit of a white border between the colors. But if you make sure that as you're doing this, that you've got that bead, and and to get it, a lot of my students will go like they'll they'll go really hard with the brush, and then you see there's no bead. It it doesn't. So you want to bounce with your brush, and let that let that water be released instead of going so strong. I prefer a flat brush, but you might prefer a round one, so it doesn't matter. Whatever rocks your boat. So then we'll go here and down to the edge of the paper, and then I will wipe it away. So, and I have a clean water and a dirty water. I have two, two waters so that that way I can always be cleaning my brush out in one and then, and then get clean water with the other one. Um, this is called a thirsty brush. You, you go back and forth on your sponge and then you just hold it like this and it picks up the extra um, paint. And so any place that you see there's a little bit of extra paint, that's what you do. So now that's our first color. And then our second color is going to be um, New Gamboge. I want to show you just here, if I can put this in front of this. Um, here's my New Gamboge. This one is Windsor Newton New Gamboge, and this one is Daniel Smith New Gamboge. So look at the difference, I mean, of what different brands. And it's really up to you about what, which one you prefer. Today I'm going to be using the, the Windsor Newton one. But I do like the Daniel Smith also very much. So, but I, I'm going to keep consistent with, with my steps because I've got a few of them done ahead of time. Um, okay. So I'm doing this, this one. Now, this is the hardest one because it is a big area to fill and lots of corners. So I'll be turning this around as I go. So I'm trying to... Um, I'm trying to stay away from that blue. I want, I don't want to touch it so that it gets um, into, I don't want green to happen. So I'll tip this around and right here, let's get that little bit wetter so I can get around to that. All right, so then we'll come back to this. We've got that little white line between and then go back up to the top hopefully this is still wet so that i can won't have strokes um i went to the transparent watercolor society show and unbelievable um the quality of of work um there and you look at the paintings and there isn't a stroke on them you can't see they look airbrushed and this is one of the tricks and um so I'm kind of turning more into a multimedia artist and my um, watercolor, every now and then I have to do one of these to refresh my mind on how I'm supposed to be painting. Um, just to really have professional looking paintings. So we keep going, following that drip. And remember you're bouncing your brush so you can uh, be able to pull it down and not have any strokes and whew, that was my that was my big one so now come back and do the thirsty brush up here and now clean our brush really really good and we will put in the red rose deep now um, when you mix these colors, they are over in the palette here, and um, you see how wet they are? I mean, they're huge, huge amounts too. So you just really um, keep adding water into these big, big, don't, don't do too little of one, or you'll have to mix it in the middle, and then, and then you'll end up with um, some strokes. But these truly are good ones for learning the proper way to do watercolor because um, if you do have strokes, 
by the time we're done, you may not see them because there's a lot of layers in these. And that's going to be my easiest one. I'm going to get just a tiny bit more power in that one. A little darker. And the only reason I could do that was because it was very wet. If I had gone back into that when it had lost its shine, oh my goodness, there would be a mess. So did you notice that I left one, one section out? I leave one of the, sh there. remember we draw three shapes and it actually creates four by doing that. So I leave one of them completely white and the reason is is because that way I can have my center of interest in that area. So, um, and I can, I can do another color with that later on if I need to be. It gives me a little bit of insurance. So I have one that's pure white. Okay, so that is the step one and now we'll move on to step two. So here we are at step two, and what I need to do now is to draw three shapes that come from the corner. So they can be anything. I could have done circles. I've got um, just this little shape here. Um, you'll see, maybe I should do a little bit darker so you can see that on here. Okay, so that's one of the shapes. And then here's another shape that, and notice they are coming from the outer edge towards the center of the paper. And they are overlapping the layers that you just did. <clears throat> By the way, I did dry this really, really well before we got to this step. And then here's my third shape that is coming in and and I don't want it to overlap this one. So these three shapes don't overlap each other. Yeah, I developed this a while ago and I just, I, I think it's really fun. Uh, really, it just, it's just better than, better than just doing color wheels, don't you think? I think. So anyway, we'll go back to our red now. This is the red rose deep, or if you use the permanent rose, um, that's fine too. And all three of these, I am I'm going to fill in the shapes. By the way, when you uh, pick out your colors, that your three colors, and and don't cheat and do four, just do three. You'll be amazed how many colors you can get from those three colors, and you'll see it right here. You start to see there's the orange, and then as it goes over the blue, you get a beautiful violet. And as it goes over the pink or the red, the red color, it gets to be a deeper, deeper red. And um, so then there is that shape. I did switch to a round brush, um, and so it, uh, it, I really like I like flat brushes the best, but. At this point, I have found that the round brushes don't make any marks. Um, and when you're working in smaller areas like this, it actually works better for a round brush. So that's why I switched to this. So now we'll go with this. And isn't it fun to see the colors that start coming alive, which to me shows in watercolor um, very rarely, I, I leave just a little tiny bit of a painting uh, with just one layer of watercolor because I just think it's uh, so much prettier when you have another layer on there for strength of that. So again, make sure you have, uh, before I do that third one, I want to mix up a little bit more. And on this one, I'm going to kind of be careful. Even though I drew this shape out here like this, um, I don't want to lose the white again. I want to have that insurance. So I'm going to go around that white shape and it still is a shape. So I'm good with that. So I'll go right here around that white. And see these are small enough where I can just keep pulling. If I work fast I don't have to work, but I still could hold it up like this and say, yep, where's that bead? Where, you know, if I still 
trying to, but you see when they're so small like this, you can just keep pulling them along and you won't have brush strokes at all. Here, going over here. This orange is really a pretty orange from the new gamboge mixed with the um, Da Vinci Red Rose Deep. I think it's a really pretty orange. Very rarely do I buy um, secondary colors. I usually mix them. And when you pick your three colors to start with, I forgot to tell you, you don't have to pick, um, you don't have to have opaque, you don't have to have transparent, you can pick whatever you want. Just know that whenever you pick, if you don't pick a red, yellow, blue, you will not, um, you will not get a purple or a green or whatever, so kind of think about that. I will be showing you some other ones that I use some neutral colors with that are, are fun too, you know, so some possibilities that you can do for that. So that is the end of step two. So now we have dried step two so that we are ready for, ready for adding another layer on these. And um, what I have done now is I, I'm drawing three more shapes that are overlapping the one that I just did. So I've got this triangle shape coming in here. I've got a rectangle shape over here that comes in right there. And then my third shape is a long, narrow one that comes clear over here. So um, now I think to myself, okay, what, what do I want? Do I want to have some more? I want to have the blue over here, even though it will be green instead of blue. That would be good because that will disguise this fact that this is all blue, the blue uh, square, uh, whatever you call that shape, um, in the middle. So what I'll do now is I'm going to put a blue over these, and you're going to see how pretty it is to see the green just appear and then also what will appear is some grays um, or some brown some neutral colors and so that those are also really fun to be able to discover just by having your three colors so there's that beautiful green that happens. New Cambodge is a good mixer, I think. And um, so that, that's one of them. And you'll see these will become um, more gray as the, as the painting goes on. And so right now, that's one mistake that, um, that watercolor artists make, I think, is they, they pick colors and they go, oh, look at this color, how pretty it is. And, and they put it on, and when it's wet, it's still pretty. But when it dries, it becomes dead. And so if you do these little color studies, um, you will discover what combinations work and which ones don't. This time I'm coming across that that white so now I've got a pure blue popping over here which is nice and then we'll have the green over in here that happens when it goes over the top of the new gamboge I, I when I first started doing these I I used um, colors that I wanted to get rid of in my palette and what I was surprised about, like one of them was sap green, and, um, and, I, and I thought, oh, I've got to get that out of there. I re I'd rather mix my greens. Well, boy, did I find out sap green, I can't remember what the mixture was, but sap green and red rose deep and then some yellow uh, was just incredible browns, just some really, really pretty ground browns that I hadn't seen before. And so that's why these are so fun to do. So I challenge you to do a bunch of these with your palette and try, you know, try try to see what you what you end up with. I think you're going to discover some a lot of colors that you'll be making into paintings later on. Um, okay, so that is the end of of um, the step three, and and it's getting easier and easier as we go. 
but you'll see that um, see the look at this this gray here that happened I love that that's really pretty and and um, and then all three of these this one and this one and this one are all to this stage exactly the process you know right now so now I'm going to show you how you can you can take this start and change them into whatever you want okay we've got our our unifying layer I call it and it's a it's your darkest dark um, that you, has led is leading us to the sides but it's really not clear yet so what I what I do when it isn't clear like right here this is dark enough this is nice but the rest of this is is not dark enough to have a clear I want the viewer to really be led around the painting so what I do at this point is um, and you've got a lot of um, sweet colors so it's it's fun it's fun to mix the all three of them together and and get a neutral and so if I mix my Antwerp blue and and you can get <clears throat> oh my goodness 30 different colors uh, just by these three three neutrals mixing together so it just depends upon which which way you want it to go more green or more purple or or more brown so it's there's all of that so I'm going more for the brown on this and we'll start up by the by the white and I'm gonna make this darker and you probably maybe you're asking well, why don't you do that to start with there's something that happens because usually you're not really exact with doing this and if you have that other underneath color there and see what I'm doing is I'm just going over the top of that that blue that I put that last layer um, there's usually a little bit of it like you can see maybe an edge of it there um, where it doesn't end up looking like a piece of construction paper that just landed on your paper on your painting and so you you want to build up with your darks always build up and I can even leave purposely just a smidgen of that um, that blue just leaving that but now do you see how it's popping a little bit more you start this so the values getting your values dark enough are really important so now I'll go here get really show this off that edge and maybe I'll skip a little bit right there and skip that edge right there and come over here This one's looking dark enough, but I'll probably go a little bit on top of that. Um, okay, back a little bit over this one. Just turn this upside down. So I'm not dragging my hand over what I just painted. So I make, um, I do usually 30 paintings in 30 days every year. And this year, 2019, I haven't done that yet. And so um, <clears throat> I, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make uh, a book out of, out of these, the third, my color studies. So if you want to um, check back on my website, and um, you, can, you can see if you want to want to order one of those. I, I make them out of a, a company that that um, does a nice job for me through the years and so being I didn't do 30 paintings in 30 days I thought well the color color theme that that might be good so um, I think that's what I'm gonna do and you will be amazed all of uh, you know I'll have like like I do here where there's three paintings and and then you know three different and three different results with the same the same start. Did I say that right, Jonas? 
I think I need a retake. <laughs> For sure. Retake. <laughs> okay, you can go ahead with it. <laughs> Okay, and that's a little sloppy, and I'll show you what to do about that, too, um, this right here. Okay, and let's see, now I need to make this a little bit darker, but I think it's starting to pop, and I'm starting to, I get excited. This is the part right here where I get, uh, I realize, okay, I need to get across this to weave the viewer, viewer over, so I'll put this a little darker right here. and then to get over to the edge. Um, okay, so this one is this one is dark enough, but I'm going to just kind of make it melt into that. I'll I'll have this over the top of this, and I'll get this over the top of this one. And when I get to this one, I'm just going to add water to it. Um, there's something called a bookend rule too. I'm telling you guys a lot of rules, aren't I? <laughs> um, so you go you, you have it on the other side of this. And then, because um, you want to have the same color come on the other side of, of things. And so now I'm just going to add water into that and let that just disappear. Because I really like that being more of a purple color down there. So let's see if we can get that to bleed a little better into that. Okay. So I've got, um, and you know, that now it's more clear where I want the viewer to look. I have definitely led them through the painting. Um, what it's lacking at this point is a third, uh, is, is some whites over in another area. And um, you may have seen this before, I don't know. Um, it's, it's really a cool technique where we're gonna be adding tape and scrubbing out with a toothbrush. So we'll dry this and then we'll do that step. Okay, so I like the white here, I like the white here, but over on this side there isn't enough of the pure whites. And so I, I, want, I want that to come to the edge of, of this box shape or roof shape, I guess I've been calling it. And so what I will do next is I'm going to tape there. I like, um, you'll have to experiment with tapes. My tape that I like is called duck tape, D-U-C-K, D -U -C -K, not duct tape. Um, and um, anyway, I like the duck and quack quack. And you, I've got this down. I love because it, it doesn't leak like some of the other, some of the other tapes. And you take your fingernail and you press down the edge of it really good. And this, of course, is on dry paper. And then put your toothbrush in the clean water bowl. And just with little circles, um, just gently scrub. Just little circles. I know a lot of people um, use, um, oh, what is that called? Anyway, they use a, a, a sponge type, uh, Mr. Clean. Mr. Clean sponges. They they use those. I I like just water. I really do. It's not I mean, it works good. If you use little circles, why not? And so I'm doing little circles, not back and forth, and I'm gently lifting this color off. And then I gently put a Kleenex down. And, um, and if you press down too hard, you might see a thumbprint. If you were going to go in and and maybe do some some color into that it might be thumbprint. Now this is um, interesting. This part here, where you take the tape off, you want to pull it so that it's onto itself. So if you pull it up like this, you run the risk of of tearing your paper. If you have a hard time um, pulling it off, take a blow dryer to it just for a minute, 
and that releases, what that does is it kind of melts the, the uh, glue that's underneath of the tape that's holding it down, and that works out, you know, that, that works good. So um, also you'll see this, another thing that I discovered quite by accident, tape um, lifts off pencil marks too. So it's real fun to um, just put a piece of tape and pull it off and it's, it's, see it's on the tape. So it's, it's, like, it's like an eraser and yet it's a little bit more gentle um, than an eraser is. So I found that out. Accidents are wonderful. <laughs> So I think that looks better already, just a little bit more white. And then I'm going to add, so what I do, what I'm thinking to myself is, have I woven the viewer's eye through the painting with the darks? Yes. Have I, have I woven the viewer's eye through the painting with the whites? Well, it's a little sketchy. So I'm going to have one more area here where I rub out. And I try to make these different shapes. So, um, maybe with, yeah, that's pretty good. A little bit like that. You can even, if you want to, it's a little risky, but if you like to live on the wild side, um, you can put the tape down like this and then you can take an X-Acto knife and draw like a little duck or um, <clears throat> a flower or something and just gently, no, don't go down too far. Why it's risky is if you go clear through the paper, you've got a problem. But I've done that before too, where I've, I've drawn something on the tape and, and, um, and then uh, lifted, take it with X-Acto knife and, and um, lift that off with a, to with a toothbrush too. And it's really fun, but. Um, I'm not going to do that in front of you. I'm, I'm not crazy. <laughs> you guys have to do that on your own. So. Just gentle little circles. And again, you gentle with your hand so you're not pressing down too hard and causing a thumbprint there. And I think you'll see that this works. It looks better. Now with the white, the white, the white. Okay. And um, now <clears throat> this right here, if it's a little bit messy, I can also clean up edges by doing this. Um, I am actually much more comfortable um, painting with a flat brush and I notice that I'm just a little bit sloppy when I use the when I use the the round and I'm sure some of you will say the exact opposite so the only reason I'm only gonna do up here but just because sometimes the toothbrush goes down too far I'm going to protect all of these areas so that um, just it, it, just in case because I really want those to be good. All right, so now we'll take this and gentle. And clean up that edge. take just a second and dry this again and then I'm going to put in pure black and I'll show you the power of black that is mixed with alizarin crimson and Windsor green. So step four, are we on step four? <laughs> I think we are. Step four or five, whatever, we're going. So that one is dried, that, the last one where we added our third shapes on there with our Antwerp. So this is right here and here and here and those are dried and now what we are going to do is figure out okay obviously my center of interest is probably going to be in this area if i'm going to keep this totally abstract 
And so I can draw anything in there to create a little bit of interest. For instance, I'm in all angles to this point. If I wanted to, I could put a circle there and wow, would that bring you into that center of interest. Um, I thought it would be fun to, to stay with the angles and, um, and show you another way that I do it. And so sometimes what I will do is I will put tracing paper over the top of my, my painting at this point and I draw a, um, just an angle is all and that ends up, this little square end of it, ends up in that white. And, uh, and I really, I, I, I love doing a lot of these. I guess I'm a real fan of Frank Lloyd Wright. And so these to me have a little bit of his flavor. So, um, so I drew this on, on, on here so that I can really space it out. If you have a light box, you can see where, where you're going to draw some indication of darks that will lead the viewers off to the, to the edges of the paper. And so I was kind of just figuring that out on this also. So that's my plan. So um, now I've got this drawn on here. Let's see this ruler. All right, so they start with this. And um, what I do is I know I want to leave this completely white. That is really important to me because that's my center of interest. And so if I make sure that I end up with this the same way. So I will definitely be, um, be having painting, leaving that white, which means that I'll paint on the other side of that. So I guess my first thing to do, I feel like the blue needs repeated one more time. Um, it's mainly on the lower level, so a little bit of blue there would be, would be good. So I'll add blue around that corner first. And I think I'll go maybe about that far, taking this to the end of the paper. It's always a good idea uh, to not have pure white near the edge of the paper anyway. And so um, you're going to be dulling that down later. You might as well do it now. So I'm going to put that around that corner and I'll bring that all the way over here. And I think you'll see by doing that, um, it creates a center of interest. You, you, you know, I think, aren't you looking there? Right, right at that corner. So now we say, okay, this is a, this is a shape. You can think of it as a roof or whatever. And, um, and we can do a few more um, uh, negative painting, which means you paint on the outside of this shape. So I'll do that right here the outside of here and I love um, to save a little bit of that green so I'll go just save a strip right here and then go on the other side of it so that it hugs that side of that roof line um, and let's see then I will do it down here where I will We'll show you here, if I go on this whole edge, you will see that, you'll start seeing that shape more. So I'm still going on the outside of it. And I created another green there. Now, this is the part where I want, I want you to weave the viewer's eye to at least three sides of the paper. So um, I think I will, um, I've got it where, you, and this is where you can go inside or outside. I'm still gonna be going outside in this case. I'll put this right to the edge of that line. And I'm just creating a little square or rectangle shape here. 
and these these shapes are woven which means they're they they're in and out it's like you're sewing with a thick ribbon and I'm to the edge of that that line again and now I want to I want to lead the viewer to the to the top edge of the paper and so I'll just do a little darker area here I think if you just think of it like you're sewing it is an easy way to think of it and then here's another where I finally get this dark to be to the edge of the paper I usually pick for this the darkest color of my triad so that's why I picked the Antwerp blue that's my darkest color that and I'm not done it will be darker yet but the, to start with I pick the darkest color and I make sure I like the way it's it's going so here see that's woven up here this one is here so now I need to get down to the bottom here and another thing that I'm doing by coming into like this pink area here is I am making the yellow and the blues more dominant than the pink. I'm cutting down on those. You want to have one of your colors more dominant. And so I'll just do a little shape here where I go within this shape. And I'm going to weave your eye down to the bottom here. So I like to save a little bit of it. So there's a little bit of that red. And then look at this where the where the white was. I'll definitely show that. I'll skip that so that that little pink area will will show up. And then we'll do a big one. Another rule that I have um, is is to try to uh, uh, when you get to the edge of the paper, do big strokes. So keep it simple. And so. I'll just do, this goes all the way to the edge. Sometimes it's hard because I, I was kind of liking that orange. <laughs> but I'll show you a way where you can bring back colors too. It's more important to get big simple shapes near the edge. Okay, now we've pretty much done, we've done on the outside of that line there. We went on the inside here just to get that um, pathway of dark to be a lead your eye. And so if it's too far, from here to here uh, to be able to see this it's really fun to switch from going on the outside of that shape to going on the inside so I'm going to go on the inside here and not touch not connect it because these are woven so it goes dun, dun, dun. okay and if I so I would say to myself if I erase this line can you still when you squint can you still see this shape? And that's what I'm going after. So now I'll bring this down. I don't know, it just felt like it needed a little bit of weight right here. So I'm bringing these, this blue down here a little bit too. Okay, and look at the power of the blue on the blue compared to this this one that I just put. So this looks like it has it looks like it's back in that that original layer. So this would be the first step. You take your darkest color and you weave a cruciform design to at least three sides. I've got four sides. I usually like cruciforms, and it's actually got two legs of dark going in here. And we'll dry this and then we'll come back and we'll do one more layer on this and really make that pop. We're going to add the dark now and as I said earlier we're going to add, I, I love mixing my black using um, Windsor Green, I think it's the blue shade, yeah it is, um, and, and then uh, Alizarin Crimson, permanent Alizarin Crimson. And so where my center of interest is, I want to have the darkest darks. And I will go within this dark pathway and just get it a little bit darker. So I'm going to switch to 
a half inch flat brush and I'm much happier again with my flat brushes. You know, people when they learn, they learn either with a flat or a round and then that pretty much sets you up for, for how, which one you prefer, I think. So I was taught with a, with a flat one. The other thing I was, <laughs> I was taught all those years, and this is funny that I'm doing this demo for you, is that I, I was taught by a really, really good, her name was Ragnald Bergstahl, and um, she was from Norway. And she, um, she was very, very fast, so she painted like Zoltan Zabel, really wet and wet and things. And um, I thought, the whole first year I was that I was painting, that you only had one chance to be able to complete your painting. And so, um, and, and I, I could tell that I was missing, missing something, so I took, um, I took a workshop from another person and, and it's funny because I was so loyal to this other teacher that I, I was almost like, you know, it felt like you're having an affair or something. And so, um, so anyway, I, I, um, I took the, the other class and she was like, Karen, what are you doing here? You're already painting, you know, you're not in a beginning class. And I said, I think I'm missing some points. And she all of a sudden said, okay, now we're going to re-wet on top. We're going to dry the paper and then we're going to re-wet with water. And I said, what did you say? And it was like... Okay, that I did not know you could do that because my teacher before that was so fast and everything got done in a hurry, and so that that opened the door up for for uh, doing this type of a painting. So I'm going to get this black right here on top of that other dark color, but now it is really black. By the way, if I hadn't um, if I hadn't dried that where I had scrubbed that out, it would be growing into that a little bit. So it's really, really important whenever, you know, to take, take a minute and dry your paper. Okay, so we've got that. And then I wanna have this dark come out from, it's like spiraling out from that, that area. But I'm going, I'm not going to go very far. What my rule is, I go past the halfway point. And so right here, I'll put it in, in, in this one. But I want to wet that area first. When you're working with this thick of paint, and by the way, when you mix that color, I didn't show that to you. Probably should show you that. I'll do that after this. Um, it is so thick that you can see brush marks. And that, it, you know, a lot of my students will say, well, it's not... I don't, can't get black. Well, it's important that you really get it so thick that you see the brush marks, so that that does make the black. And when you have something that thick, you can't um, fade it out very good without pre-wetting. That's why I put that water on there first. And so I'll put just a touch right here on the edge and the water on the edge of it. Let's do that again. Wet that area first. And then I should be good. So see now that goes right down into there. Now I need to have the dark come over. So I've gone past the halfway point and now I'll have the dark come over on this side. So it leads the viewer over here. And I don't want this whole thing to be black, so I'm going to wet that first, put water in there first. Water in this one too. And then now I'll put my black. Let me show you the, how I mix the black this time, because I'm just about out. So here I've got my Windsor Green, and I, my paints are dried in the palette. And so um, they've dried at least for uh, one or two days. And then I, I, I go between this one and the alizarin crimson without cleaning my brush. So it's, it, you're just going with the green. Your brush is, is damp, but it's not got a lot of water in it. So I've wet it, but I've, got, I've wiped it off on the sponge. 
and then I just go back and forth between these two colors that's basically all I use those two colors for is mixing the black so um, and then I just keep going until I can't see it as a green or a, so that's green so now I'm going to make add more red into it so now it's black and you see this see the the brush marks that's how thick you want that so okay so hopefully this is still wet I put the water on there and we'll take another brush and just fade that out into that wet area and that way it holds on to a little bit of that green and maybe just a touch right here too and, and fades out Okay, so let's look at it with a, um, a mat and see, because with abstracts, I don't know, other paintings, if you don't, they don't look good like this, well, they're probably not good. <laughs> if, if you, it, with abstracts, it, it tends to really help to be able to see them on, um, it, it really helps to be able to see it where you don't have the riffraff on the outside uh, with that one so much. And so, you know, you look at it at this point and say, okay, what can I do to improve this painting? Um, you know, do maybe, I, I think um, this could be a little wider because these two are, are the same size up here. And I think that that bothers me. So I'm gonna make that adjustment. And, um, and another way that I judge my paintings is I take a picture of them and I, I see, I don't know, I see things better in the camera because it's tiny um, than I do um, when I'm, yep, <laughs> almost lost you there for a second. Um, anyway, so I see, it, I see it better in the camera than I do otherwise. So I'm taking that brown mixture that I made before and I'm just going to bring that over just a little bit right here. And I think that will be better. Let's turn it right side up and see if I'm not right. Okay, so that's wider. Um, is it wide enough? And the other thing I do is that um, my camera has, I have a, an app that I love that makes things just black and white. And that, that really helps too. Okay, so now eh, I think I need a little bit wider. Let's go a little wider. Um, I might actually lose part of this orange is what I might do. So that this comes over on the other side. Um, my bug, I love good design. I, I love talking about it, I love doing it. Um, my, my workshops, I just can't stop telling students um, about repetition, variation, and dominance. And so I talk about repeating shapes. If you put a smile shape in, you should have a frown shape. That's, an op that's, a, that's a repetition, but it's, it's also a variation because one goes up, one goes down. And if I have an angle um, like this one, I've got an angle going here. So you've got a lot of things that balance balance things off. And so that's that's what I that's what I look for um, when when I'm when I'm judging my work. So these little ones, when you're not when you have nothing um, really that um, you know no subject is is really a good you can you can really see see shapes better and so it's a good judge for you to be able to um, to be to have better design so okay now I think I'm kind of pleased with this let's see what we got yeah that that's heavier here that's lighter there I mean the width is different so I think this is all interesting. There's different size shapes. I definitely know that this corner grabs my attention for the center of interest. Um, so it's a fun little color study, don't you think? 
So that's one of the ones that, that we will do. And um, maybe I'll show you in the other two how I can finish this up into different things after this. Okay, here we are back with um, another painting that I developed to that, that third stage where just um, we had the, the, the red, yellow, blue, and then we had the, t the red shapes that were overlapping, and then we had the green, actually not the blue, but it turned to green when it went over the yellow. Um, we have those that, this painting is developed to that stage. And so here is a right turn where you can say, oh, I don't want to keep this totally abstract. I'm going to add people. Um, what I do in this case is I always draw them on tracing paper and then I move them around until I get the figures in the area that, that you know, where I really, really want. I love to have um, one of the figures head in a light area um, if possible. Um, if I want the head to be darker, then it'll be the dark against the light. So I'll put that right there. And uh, I watch for tangents. So this one, I don't know if you can see through, yeah, you can see through this, uh, where this had, it would hit, hit that line. So I need that to go up farther. So it will be through, at least it'll intersect that. That'll be fine. And I think that is pretty good. Once you get your figures in, in the place that you want, um, you, you need you an assistant. <laughs> I would say, I know when I made it when I have an assistant. <laughs> My grandkids always introduce me to their teachers as she's almost famous. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm not there yet. Anyway, um, so we've got um, our figures. And by the way, when you draw figures, maybe I should do that too in this sketchbook here. Um, the most common mistake with drawing people is that they put the heads too big. And so just concentrate on, on I'll, I'll show you actually, I'll make one big on purpose. Okay, so got my, and then the, the shoulders come down at an angle and then it's up to you. Do you want, um, do you want, like Bob Burridge talks about that you have a carrot shape, you know, so you go like that. You could do, you could do it that way. Or, or maybe he's wearing a suit coat, you know, so, um, so it's got a little bit of a ledge right here. And you put it like that, he's wearing a suit. I love long legs because I happen to be tall, so I guess that, hey, that's what they say, you paint like yourself. So the angles are here. And here's my, here's my head. I purposely have drawn it too big so you can see that it really is better if that head comes within here. And then I always tell students if you do your head too big now you've got an angel. See? Right there. So this goes, I, with a man I like to kind of flatten his head. I don't know why, it just seems to work. So you get like that, the edge. And, and so I make all my mistakes on here and then I trace it and then, then I'm ready to put it on this paper. With a woman, um, most women are shorter than men and so I'll put them a little bit shorter and then, and then you just have the angle and um, by the way, how I'm drawing right now is how I do when very loose and things when I'm doing what I call wire drawing. So it just is important to, to gestural draw when you're doing wire drawing. And look at it, it almost looks like she's, hang, she's got her elbow here and hanging onto a person. I didn't even do that on purpose. That's just from um, being very, very loose with your, with your drawing in the first step of what's called wire drawing. So the head is a little bit too big again, so make it smaller and the angle right here. And then with my women, what I do is I have them wear long gowns and that's the difference between the men and the women. And I like these to be almost like statues. They are, um, uh, I, I, don't, I, I don't want them to be too exact. And so I want them to be more contemporary. 
So I have taped this in place. Like I told you, I made sure that I didn't have any tangents, which means things that just line up and kind of kiss each other, but don't overlap. And so now I'm going to be putting <clears throat> me putting, um, I, I put my graphite paper underneath. Make sure my graphite is down. It's important. And here, this, this couple are almost the same height. Okay, so go here and, and they're holding hands. You really want to press hard. Um, it is graphite paper, not carbon paper. Big, big difference. And then I'll just put these shapes. I'm not sure if I'll go by them or not, but I'll have some linkage to the figures so they're not completely hanging out there alone. Okay, <clears throat> before I take the tape away, I make sure that I have drawn them, that, that it is all drawn in there. So that's why I tape. I have the tape so I can look and check it out. So let's see, that hill shape maybe come right here and here, and that will link up to the figures. So to um, create the figures, um, just like I, when I drew that big box, I was drawing a thing. And so, so when you draw a thing, I'm going to paint around it, which is negative painting. So what I've decided is that um, this hill shape back here is going to come up to her there. So I'm going to paint around, around the edge of her outfit right here. And um, I think we'll go with, a, uh, well, we'll do, we'll do the same as what we did before. We'll have the blue first, because that's our darkest color of the triad. So that's Antwerp. So we've got our figures drawn on the paper. And um, I've got like the land coming up to the edge of them. I always say a term called hugging your stars. And so I want to negative paint around them to make them pop forward. And so, but I don't want to go around the whole, I don't want to go around the whole thing. And so I'm going to um, use the darkest color that we had of our triad of, this is still the Antwerp blue and the red rose deep or permanent rose if you want to use Winsor Newton of that, that one. And then, um, and New Gamboge. And so I'm going to um, create this edge right here. And um, maybe I will go around that stripe right here. And we'll go out to the edge right here. And there's the green. And then I want to go on the outside of the of the outfit down here too. So let's see. Let's go. Let's skip this red part. I'm getting a little bit dark. I want to be able to see through it. So I'm going to add more water into that. That's better. And maybe there'll be another land mass right there. I'll just stop right there. And save a little bit of that yellow. Okay. And then this comes across here, this land that's behind them. And, and let's make it a little bit taller up here and between them. Look at this. Let's see how far should we have that down? Maybe the, a little bit cooler. So that shows the different, the a negative shape between the two figures. I do a lot, a lot of sketching every day, and I love doing these figures the very best. Um, 
and um, it's funny how you're, you're just mindless sketching and what happens is um, there's a story that always there's always a story it, it's funny because you'll just all of a sudden say oh my gosh look at they're they're having troubles or oh look how in love they are or whatever um, your particular painting does it, it's really kind of funny so I'll show you a little bit about that one I had that looked like the third person was a pickpocket <laughs> so that's one of the paintings I, I uh, showed at Critique lately so you can start seeing the bottom part of the figures and now I want to put some color within their heads so I'll go here with the same blue so that I can bring that blue up to the top and I'm going inside and and the reason I'm going inside the head is because it's in a light area so I'm going to have the dark I want to want to save that white around him so um, so I'm going to put the dark inside of him and then I will just fade this out and this is just the first layer of this if I don't want to lose all of that white what I do is um, I just save a little bit and I just go like this and come kind of maybe save a teeny bit of white little difference there Dif just different size and I'll put her head let's I'm going to put her head in more of the rosy color but I did let it get dirty so it's not as I, I like them to be more neutral she also is in a light yellow is light so if she were in a dark area I would have left her hair her head light and I would have painted around it and then I'll just fade this out to nothing. Okay, I'm going to dry this and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you how to make some wire drawing within them uh, so you can get some really interesting shapes and then we'll have fun bringing up the, the values from there. Okay, so these, this is dried and, um, and now I'm going to show you some fun, a fun, fun way to add some line work into this to really truly show you what what I call wire drawing is like a three-day workshop but um, but I will give you enough that you will get your feet wet and you're gonna be hooked it's really really fun um, okay so what I want you to do is you take your pencil and not your and and not not everything you start right with a marker but I want you to do your pencil and um, and I don't want you to look at the paper I want you to look at something else in the room and just let your your pencil go like crazy. And every now and then I want you to do what I call whoopie doo. And so you just go sideways like that. So go across and we get some really interesting shapes. Okay, so all I did is I did like what a blind contour drawing of some objects that were in the room that I don't care if it looks like them, they won't look like them because I'm not looking at my paper and I'm purposely keeping it really, really loose. But if I try to make these shapes that I did here by looking, they will look contrived. And so it's a whole, it, it's, it's a good magic. Um, it looks like I missed the top part of him, so I'll just go back and I will not use, I will still stay with the pencil, but I'll, I'll put my pen, so my finger here so I know okay this is where I go all right so I've got a few more lines there so now I'm going to um, I'm going to go trace these with my permanent marker you can use whatever permanent marker you like 
I also change, I trace the different colors. So where I come to a different color, I will trace around that. So got like that. And these are completed shapes. By the way, I learned what I call wire drawing from my friend Mary Beth Downs. And um, she is going to be a demo, doing a demo here too. And um, she gave me the first two steps. And then I took it um, about four or five more steps from that. And, and I'm still not done. Um, I, I love to have um, this turn into, I do abstract designs using this method. And then I make huge abstracts out of it. So um, we, like I said, it would take like three days, but it's it's pretty fun. And so I owe Mary Beth Downs a lot for teaching me the first steps to get me going on this. It's funny how many people have influenced you and Carlin has definitely I call her the Pied Piper of artists. So, um, you know, there's a lot of, of great artists that influence our work. And I think it's important to say thanks. So, okay, so keeping going here. And you see how these interesting shapes that I could never have thought of myself, that's like the kitchen sink. There truly is a sink back there that I was drawing. And then hopefully if you're successful at this, you will have all different size shapes. And down here, I'm just gonna keep this more geometric. Okay. And um, <clears throat> what I thought I would do is I'm going to show you how to do one of these and then I have a finished painting that I'll pull out and, and show you show you the finished product. But um, it's important that this marker be a permanent. Um, a lot of people talk about uh, um, different ones that they like. I like the Sharpie because it I, I can I can do it on the side and things and so for me it's the best one. You might like another one better. Um, I always figure if you want them archival, you can always spray an archival spray on top of it and protect it. So that's that's my opinion on that. Um, when, with these, what, the next step I do is I do a, something called thick and thin. And so uh, this layer up here, and I don't know, Jonas, if you think we need this to be tighter, closer, zoom in here. Um, we're going to be with this line here we're going to be making the top part of it it's almost like you put a little triangle on the end of it and and then you make it vignette down into the rest of it and so um, so every time I see a line I say okay how can I make that line interesting this I believe is something that we should be doing and here's my my talking about good design again. Um, you should always make things entertaining and interesting. So these are not entertaining. They're all the same exact width. And once you start putting in, um, you know, a little triangle at where the intersection is or something, um, they start getting to be more interesting. So, um, and you can just do this, just a little, line, you know, thick and the thin, lots. Um, and, and all of a sudden, my husband comes home, what's, what's for supper? And I won't even know. For me, it'll be like two o'clock in the afternoon. Hours go by. And, and everybody tells me this. Even people that think that they're not going to uh, enjoy doing or it's gonna be too putsy. It, it's very fun. And so, um, this is this is this is what you do. So can you see that good? Okay. So now we've got. <clears throat> so you do the thick and the thin. 
And um, and when you're doing these these figures like this, another another way you can do it is let's say that you want something to be more shadowed. I love to do something. Um, I'll do it in the background on this one, just so you can see. Um, it's it's a zentangle type movement, and um, so I'll just pick maybe this part right here, this this area right here. And all I do is I go one, two, three, four, five. That's the left side of the house. And then I go one, two, three, four, five. That's the right side of the roof. And then I go straight. And then when I get five of those, then I go to the left side of the house and then to the right side of the house. And um, it ends up looking like a basket weaving type thing. Um, it's pretty fun. And it makes things a, a value darker. So if you want to get into like line work in your pieces, this is a fun technique to do. Um, if, you, if you don't, then you can just keep painting your values. But you can see how this does, this technique makes it a, a value darker. So I'm hugging and I go across to the edge here too. And to the, so left side of the roof, right side of the roof, straight. And that seems to work for me. How many you, lines you do is up to you. Even if you, if you do left side of the roof and then straight and then do left side of the roof again, nobody's gonna notice. It's just there's too much going on here that you truly will, you won't notice any little mistakes like that. So um, so that's that's pretty much how I do that. Another thing I love to do is just have fun. Uh, if I see a little teeny skinny area, like I've got this white area right here, sometimes I do checkerboard in that. I just doodle. It's, it's pretty fun. And um, so I'll have that. Um, with the figures, the one last thing to show you is usually you have two layers. And so this is dry now, so I can do another layer on this. The Zentangle, this, this type, you can do at any time during your painting. Um, I like to do it at this early stage before I've built up my darks and things because then I can decide um, whether I want to have more darks within part of these shapes. So sometimes I might make just, just a few of these little shapes darker. So it helps to be able to see them there. So I'm going to wet the head first. See, this is what I didn't know that I could do for a whole year. I didn't know you could re-wet the paper without losing what was underneath. And then I'm going to put a little bit darker using the same three colors. Let's do a little bit of Antwerp in now. And I'm going to do just one side. And, um, okay, so the same with the, with the guy. I'm going to wet the head with clear water. Make him a little bit different color. Let's get her a little darker. That's just not dark enough there. That's better. And they have a little bit more form to them. <clears throat> and um, so that's kind of how I finish my, my, my guy, my woman, my man, my figures. Um, sometimes you can do it if, if this dries and it isn't quite dark enough, you can do one more layer on there. Um, so here is the finished piece so you can kind of see what I was talking about where I have a dark, dry brush there and then I have showcased them 
by getting darker around what I call hugging and saving a little bit of part of it that goes right through them. And so you can see how fun that, that um, wire drawing is to add a little bit of interest in the figures. Um, this isn't quite done because if you have, remember my three words, repetition, variation, and dominance. If I have all this, this line work in the figures, I have to have a little bit of line work out in the outside edge too. And so um, even if I put it, if I go like right here, I could do just what I just talked about. Now it's got a repeat of that. So then maybe over here, I'll put it, let's see, even, hmm, this looks a little messy right here. Why don't I do it here? Let's see, go right here and out. Left side of the roof, right side of the roof, straight up and down. So now you've got some line work out on the outside edge here too. I've got a little bit of line work here. Um, this could be a little bit more interesting by making it thicker in parts of it. I'm not an architect, so I'm not gonna pretend to be one where they have perfect lines. Um, and now it looks a little bit more more finished. So I want to show you a few more things as I end up today. And um, these are some more that I that I did. Um, where did I put? There it is. Um, so this you can see you do a martini glass um, works good um, and. So that's three colors. I don't know what colors because I didn't put them on the back. So that's a that's a little advice to you guys. <clears throat> this one though, I can tell you that I and these are colors I really really like. This is neutral tint, new gamboge, and quinacridone burnt orange. And so, um, isn't that a pretty color combination? It's all warms and things, but look at all the neutrals, all the wonderful, wonderful neutrals that you get from just using those three colors. And so, um, and then it, this one is, again, the word love. And, um, and, and how, let's see, this col these colors, were, I think this was Scarlet Lake, was it? No. This is raw umber, Antwerp blue, and pyrrole orange. I think I, I had a friend give me a little dab of the pyrrole orange and I thought, oh, because I don't like usually having secondary colors. So I used that up and, and I, liked, I liked how that turned out. And so um, I've done smaller ones um, like this one. Let's see if I turn this over. You can see some smaller ones. So, and this was fun, and the word love, I, this is where I had the circle as one of my first shapes, and I thought, oh, I almost can see love there. It just kind of came to me. So that's kind of how these others started. Here's a pure abstract, and all the colors that, that I got um, from Antwerp Blue, New Gamboge, and Red Rose Deep. The same exact colors that I used in this one but you can see it looks a little bit more colorful. Um, see, is that all that I have? I think that might be. So um, in closing, I hope you've all enjoyed uh, making color studies that are a little bit more fun than doing color wheels and color graphs. And um, my website is karenknutson.com. That's spelled K-N-U-T-S-O-N. And if you'd like to see more videos by me um, on my website, there is a link to um, a charcoal pour uh, bird painting that is real fun. Has a little bit more, maybe a tiny bit of the Zentangle thing that I just showed you. You actually got more information that is on there. 
but um, I think you'll enjoy that and uh, Creative Catalyst did that for me and they did a nice job so um, thanks so much to um, Jonas and to uh, Carlin for uh, having me do these workshops. So, um, happy painting. I wanted to, to um, maybe do a little bonus here and show you, show you another uh, wire drawing that I've done. Um, and these are, and I, was, I was talking about my sketchbook and how I do, I try to do a sketch every day um, that will truly make you a better artist. But this has the wire drawing in it, the, the techniques that I showed you about the thick and the thin, it also has that, um, I call it a herringbone, I don't know what it is, but it's just the left side of the roof, the right side of the roof, and then straight um, to be able to have um, some it's shadow type thing. So where the breast of the bird is shadowed, that's where I do that. So you've got a little bit of um, a roundness to it. Um, so I thought this would be fun to show you as one more example of uh, a wire drawing. So. I hope you guys have fun with that.